People, the citizens of a country, especially when considered in relation to those who govern them. Lud, warstwa społeczeństwa utrzymująca się z pracy fizycznej. Ovo, conjunto de pessoas que falam a mesma língua, têm costumes e interesses comuns. Halk, aynı ülkede yaşayan ve o ülkenin yurttaşı olan insan topluluğu. People, supporters or employees of a person in power or authority. Pueblo, seres humanos que forman un grupo o asamblea o están vinculados por un interés común. Narid, grupa ljudez jednani zemleju Mobiu czy kulturiu. Volk. Mensen die deel uitmaken van een groep of gelinkt worden door een gemeenschappelijk doel. People. The men, women and children of a particular country, nation, community or ethnic group. We begin. <laughs> There's a fine spirit of community in this town of ours, a remarkable public spirit. And of course, this stems from our having a great common concern that, that binds us all together. The spa. Exactly. We have our great new magnificent installation, the spa. And mark my words, Mr. Hofstad, these baths will become our most precious asset, unquestionably. It's simply extraordinary the way this town has revived in the last two years. People here have some money again. There's life, excitement. Land and property values are, are rising every day. Well, and unemployment's down. Now, yes, that's right. And taxes have been reduced by a very comfortable margin. The future is looking so promising. <laughs> every day, <laughs> inquiries coming in about accommodations. Well, then, the doctor's article ought to be quite timely. He's been writing again? Well, a recommendation of the baths and the report and the health promoting conditions of life here. But I have the article back. Oh, oh I see. So there, there must have been a, a flaw in it. I no, see. no, no, no. I thought it was better to wait until now in the spring when people start planning their summer vacations. And the yeah. doctor agreed. Well, he is on the staff after all. Well, yes. And the doctor is the one who originated the idea. He did. <laughs> really? I, I thought, um, I had an impression that I played a modest part in, in this um, enterprise. Well, no one denies that, Mr. Mayor. You made it a practical reality. 
I only meant that the idea came from the doctor first. Mm, well, my ideas have met, my brothers had many <laughs> ideas. So. But putting it into action, it calls for a different sort of man. The idea came from the doctor first. <laughs> it's so curious with these people of, of, of common stock. They, they never can learn any, any tact. But why let that bother you? Couldn't you and Thomas share the honor like brothers? After all, you are brothers. Yes, it would seem so. Um, but your dear husband can't be satisfied with his share, apparently. Nonsense. The two of you get along famously. Have you had dinner? Oh, it's you, Peter. <laughs> well, this is a pleasure. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to be going in just a moment. Oh, rubbish. There's hot toddy on the table. <laughs> Thank you. But I never, I never take part in toddy parties. This isn't a party. Well, it looks to me. It's astonishing how your guests gobbled it all up. Well, yes. <laughs> isn't it wonderful to watch young people eat? Endless appetites. Yeah, you know, I've been feeling so buoyant and happy. I, I can't tell you how lucky I feel to be part of this world that's just budding and bursting out everywhere. <laughs> what, what an amazing new world. An amazing new world. But, of course you can't see it like I can. I mean, you've lived here your whole life. But for me, stuck in that little limbo up north, <laughs> hardly ever seeing a stranger with a, with a fresh idea to share. <sighs> well... To me, it's as if I've been plucked down in the middle of a swarming metropolis. <coughs> metropolis. <clears throat> I mean, there's life here. There's, there's, there's a promise, an immensity of things to, to work and fight for. And that's what's important. It's about making a good living, Peter. It's something you learn to appreciate when you've been living like I have on starvation wages. S seriously? Oh, you, you can't imagine how tight things were for us up there. Yes, quite often. Now we can live like kings. You know, today, for example, we had roast beef for lunch and we're having some more for supper. Are you sure you don't want to slice? No, 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 de definitely not. Look, you see, we bought a new tablecloth. Mm, yes, so I, I noticed. And a lampshade? Hmm. <laughs> no, I could allow myself that. And Catherine says I'm, I'm earning almost as much as we spend. Almost? But a man of science ought to live with a little style. I, I don't feel I can deny myself the gratification of inviting guests. I need that. You know, having been shut out for so long, for, for me, it's a necessity of life to, to, to spend time with bold young people, with adventurous minds and a wealth of energy. Uh, here they are, savouring their food in there. I wish you knew Hofstad a bit better. Well, Hofstad told me he'll be printing another one of your articles about the baths, something uh, the last winter. Yeah, no, no, no that, that I, don't, I don't really want that in right now. No, it, it seems to me that this is the perfect time. Uh, well, you might be right, under ordinary circumstances. Well, what's extraordinary about the circumstances now? Peter, I honestly can't tell you, not, not this evening anyway. There could be something quite extraordinary. Or it might be nothing at all. Well, this sounds uh, very mysterious. Uh, is anything wrong? I mean, I, as I assume that I, as, as chairman of the board of the municipal baths, would... And I would assume that... No, Peter, please, let's, let's not fly at each other like this. I insist that all necessary steps be carried out and taken in a businesslike fashion by... The legal authorities, I cannot condone any underhanded activities. When have I ever been underhanded? In a well-ordered society, uh, individuals have to learn to subordinate themselves to those authorities charged with the common good. Well, quite possibly. Uh, what in thunder has that got to do with me? Because, my dear Thomas, it is precisely this. That you seem never to want to learn, to learn, but be careful. One of these days, you're going to have to pay for it. Peter is a lonely man. Poor fellow. He has no one home 
to give him comfort. Just business, business. And all that damn weak tea he's always sloshing down. Are you sailing again soon, uh, Captain Horser? I think we'll set sail next week. Hmm. But then you can't vote for the new town election. There's an election? Oh, didn't you know? No, I don't bother. But you are concerned about the public affairs, are you? I don't understand them. But do you realize how many people had to fight hard to get the right to vote? People who don't understand too? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, Society is like, like your ship. All hands must be on the wheel. Oh. <laughs> Maybe on land this works, but definitely not at sea. <laughs> well, it's curious that there are some people who care so little about what happens in this town. Father, I have a letter for you. Okay, so do you have any question? Yes, Mr. Hofstad. Uh, were, were you teaching night school again today? Two hours tonight on top of five hours this morning. Yes, mother. And papers to grade until midnight, I see. A whole batch, yes. Oh. Captain Horster, I'm listening. Pedra, you take on more than your first year. Yes, but that's fine. You feel so deliciously tired afterward. Mr. Billing? And you like that? Yes, I do. What I hate is all the hypocrisy. At school, we have to stand there and lie to the children. Captain Horster? Yeah, you have to lie? Well, we have to teach them all kinds of things we don't believe in ourselves. If only I could lead my own school, things would be different. It's the general opinion. Is it not that our, that our town is a, is a healthy place? Why, of course. You're yeah, an exceedingly healthy place. We've praised it to the skies and I've extolled its virtues in the Daily Times. Yes, the pulsating heart of our town. Yeah, well, that too, yes, but do you know what they are? Do you know what they are? These, these great bars that have cost us such a lot of money. What are they? What? What, dear? The whole setup's a, a cesspool. The baths? But, but doctor... A, a spa? Simply incredible. It's a, a health hazard in the worst way. All that reeking waste from the mill. All that reeking waste from Mockadal. It's seeped into the pipes. 
and the same damn poison slops being leeching out onto the beach as well. Y you mean in the bathing area? Yes, exactly. How can you be so certain, Doctor? Uh, well, I've had my suspicions. Last year, there were a number of unusual cases of typhoid and gastritis amongst our visitors. That's right, there were. Well, at first, we assumed that the visitors had brought their maladies with them. But later, I began having second thoughts. So I set out to analyze the water. So that's what you've been so preoccupied with. Well, I sent samples of both the drinking water and the seawater to the university for careful analysis. And you just got the results? Yes. Irrefutable proof. Millions of bacteria in the water. It's toxic. I've written a report to the board of directors. All I needed was proof. Thank God you found out in time. What do you think Uncle Peter will say, Father? Yeah, well, undoubtedly, he'll be glad that something of such importance has been brought to light, though I'm sure he won't like that I found out first. Well, may I have permission to run a story on your big discovery in the Daily Times? Oh, I'd be most gratified. Well, the public should hear about this, and the sooner, the better. Oh, Doctor, you are our most important citizen of this town. Oh, come on, really. I've done no more than my duty. Oh, no, 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 Hofstadt, don't you think this town owes Dr. Stockman a parade or something? Oh, oh, no, 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 my dear friends, please, I don't want any fuss. And Catherine, if, if the board proposes to raise my salary, I won't have it. Quite right, dear. Hello, doctor. На здоровье. На уже. Prost, doctor, prost. Much more. <laughs> Thank you. Dear friends, thank you. My heart is so full. What a blessing it is to, to serve your own hometown and your fellow citizens. Hurrah, Catherine! Hooray! Hurrah! Hurrah, Doctor! Hurrah!
Thomas, expect me tomorrow at high noon. Truth, that which is true. Waarheid, dat wat als waar wordt beschouwd door een persoon of groep. Verdad, conformidad de lo que se piensa con lo que se dice o se siente. Truth, a fact or belief that is accepted as true. Verdade, propriedade de estar conforme os fatos ou a realidade. Pravda, sexta pitvergine realnistiu tasovistiu, istina. Hakikat, bir işin doğrusu, gerçek. Prawda. Zgodna z rzeczywistością treść słów, interpretacja faktów, przedstawienie czegoś zgodnie z realiami. Shinjitsu. Uso ya itsuwari de wa nai honto no koto, makoto. Truth. The property of being in accord with fact or reality. Truth. Thomas, if you want to get the word out, couldn't you just share the credit with your brother? Couldn't you make it seem as though he's the one who led you to the discovery? Is it? Is it true? Father, what a nice surprise. Is it true? Please, come in. Only if it's true. If not, I'm leaving. Is what true? This wild story about the water. But of course it's true, but how did you hear about it? Petra came by on her way to school. <laughs> I thought she was just making a fool of me. Is it really true? Yes, irrefutably. Isn't this lucky for the town? <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, but I, but I found out in the nick of time. Yes, yes, yes. And you were saying that some animals got loose in the water pipes? <laughs> Bacteria. Millions of them, most likely. But no one can see them. Well, no, I mean, no, you can't, you can't see them. No, of course not. Now may you all be crazy enough to believe that. Oh, I hope the whole town will be that crazy. <laughs> Old town. <laughs> it would have served them right. Everyone calls me the badger. They think they are so much smarter than us old boys. They kicked me out of the town council. Like a dog. <laughs> they chased me out. <laughs> Make fools of them, I say. Escreve isso para mim, Billy. Dear Thomas, you said yesterday that the poison comes from upstream in Molodol. Doctor, I think our whole town is rotting. Wacht, wacht, wacht. Wat bedoel je daarmee, Hofstad? Well, little by little, this town has fallen into the hands of a clique of politicians, those rich, old, established names in town. They've taken over our lives. Yes, yes, and they do lack competence and vision. Wait, yes. so the only way to straighten things out is if the press steps in? Hmm. Well, when I took over the times, I resolved to break up that ring of old conservatives who hold all the power. Uh, are we starting a revolution in the times? I come from a poor family, as you know, and I know firsthand that the most pressing need among the lower classes is to take power back. I absolutely understand. Well, you know that a journalist must seize every opportunity to liberate the powerless, the oppressed masses. Ja, Hofstadt. Ja, Hofstadt. 
I understand. Vive la révolution! Vive la révolution! Vive la révolution! Vive la révolution! Oh, a slaxon. I, I thought you'd be at the newspaper this time of day. Forgive me for intruding, doctor, but I had to see you. If what I heard from Mr. Billing is true, that you're advocating for a better water system, then I'm throwing my full support behind you. And I can get the small business community behind you. This water system is important to us, that the spa gives us all a living. And we make up the solid majority in this town. That is when we choose to. And it's always good to have the majority with you, doctor. Well, that is undoubtedly true, but I can't believe that any special measures are needed in this case and everything is, is as clear cut as this. Well, perhaps we might stage a little demonstration. A demonstration? Naturally, with great moderation, Doctor, because moderation is a citizen's chief virtue. Yes, in well, my opinion, you're, anyway. You're certainly, you are certainly well known for it, Mr. Laxon. Uh, but I still can't <laughs> believe that, that these measures would be necessary. Well, authorities need prodding, Dr. Stockman. Authorities need prodding, though I certainly don't mean to criticize them. Hey, Listen, wait. Oop. We'll go after them in the paper tomorrow, Aslaxon. Yay, but without violence, in moderation. Well then, goodbye, doctor. Rest assured. And the small business community will stand behind you. You've got the solid majority, doctor. Stir things up in this town. You're referring to Slatson. Claro que também referindo a Slatson. Timid and spineless. Better eligible voter. Enough writing and editorial. Not before I talk to my brother. Meu Deus, mas ele é burro. The mayor doesn't take action. How can you think he won't do anything? Well, it is quite possible. <laughs> well, then I promise you, you can print my report complete and uncut. Your word on that? Well, not just my word. Look, here it is. Go ahead and read it. Very good. It'll all go smoothly, Mr. Hofstad. Very smoothly. Well, has Peter come by yet? Catherine, do you know who's got my back? No, who's got your back? The solid majority. The solid majority, and that's a good thing, is it, Thomas? Well, I should hope it's a good thing. <laughs> My goodness, how gratifying it is to, to stand like this in brotherhood with your fellow citizens. And to accomplish so much good, Father. It must be him. Doors open! Yesterday I received a report from you discussing the condition of the water at the baths. Yes. Have you read it? Um, I, I think we should go, Petra. Was it really necessary to do all this investigating behind my back? Well, until I had absolute proof. Do you intend to put this document forward, to put it before the board of directors as an official recommendation? Of course. Something has to be done about this, and fast. This water is poison. 
And you conclude that we have to build a new sewer to drain off the so-called impurities and that all the water pipes have to be relayed. And that's not the worst of it. This work would take two years. Two whole years? At least. And meanwhile, what do we do with the baths? Shut them down? Do you really think anybody was come this far if there's a rumor that the water is contaminated? Yes, Peter, but that is what it is. And just now, when the baths are gaining recognition, I will likely have to shut them down, and you'll have ruined your own hometown. I ruined? Your report doesn't persuade me that the condition of the baths is as critical as you claim. Oh, with anything, it's worse. A capable doctor would be able to control the toxins and treat them if they become obvious. Now that's a trick, a lie. My report is perfectly accurate, and you know that, Peter. You're the one who got the bars and the water system laid out in the first place, and it's this. It's your hellish miscalculation that you won't admit. You don't think I can see straight through you? Even if I seem a bit over-anxious about my reputation, it's for the good of the town. Without moral authority, I could hardly serve the people. It is imperative that this report, your report, not be submitted in. It must be withheld for the common good. Nothing, not a word of this catastrophe must leak out. My dear Peter, there's no stopping it now. Oh, it will be stopped. Mm, too many people know already. Who? Not those fellows at the Times. Yeah, well, the press is going to see to it that you do your duty. I am warning you. Since you discussed this delicate issue with outsiders instead of the Boers, rumors will start flying. You will deny them. You will arrive at the conclusion that things are not as critical as you say. Uh, what? Moreover, you will publicly affirm your confidence in the board of directors to rectify any possible problems. But that's out of the question. I am telling you, Peter, it is my informed opinion. As a member of the staff, you're not entitled to any personal opinions that contradict your superiors. I have the freedom to express myself. About anything else, not the bears. Uh, and what if I don't obey? You will be dismissed. What? You will be dismissed from the staff. Any person who insults their hometown is an enemy of society. Catherine, use whatever influence you have over your husband for your own family's sake. My family concerns no one else but me. You have to take this treatment in your own house, father. Of course, it's humiliating, Thomas. I could kill uncle. He called you an enemy of society. We are not going to swell that. Ale Petrusio, tvi vojko maje vsu vladu. Tak, ale ojciec ma rację. What does it help to be right if you don't have any power? Ha. Czyli uważasz, że nie warto stać po dobrej stronie. Nie bądź śmieszna, matko. For heaven's sakes, Thomas, you're not thinking about setting yourself up against your brother, are you? A co ten Bóg ciebie ma zrobić? Porzucić wszystko, co prawdziwe i sprawiedliwe? But it won't do any good. Będzie walczył do końca i wygra. Lukinsia, push back. You might just push yourself right out of a job. Ale przynajmniej spełni swoje obowiązki wobec ludzi. Do ludzi. 
What about your responsibility to this family, to the people who depend on you? Podumajemo pro rodinu. O rodzinie, o rodzinie. Przestań ciągle myśleć o naszej rodzinie najpierw. To by duże lachko hovorite Petrusio, jak by trzeba było, ty by mogła było stojadę na swoich nohach. But, but what about the boys? And, and think about yourself for a moment and, and me. Zwariowałeś? Jeśli będzie się czołgał na kolanach jak tchórz przed wujkiem, to czy kiedykolwiek będzie szczęśliwy? Mili Boże, God save us from the kind of happiness we'd endure if you keep defying him. You'd be right back to where you started. No position, no steady income. I thought we had enough of that. This family, this family is of concern to me too. Matko Boska, ale tak właśnie biurokracja niszczy dobrych ludzi. Tak, tak, Petrusiu, rzecz jasno. Co wstydno, ale w świecie stylki niesprawiedliwości. There's so much injustice in the world. Remember your own boys. Think of what lies ahead for them. No właśnie. Kiedyś będzie musiał im spojrzeć w oczy, jak dorosną. Good God. Muskarzyszaś, Thomas. Thomas, say something. No? That's really something. Did you read it all? I'll say. You're going to run the doctor's article, aren't you? Yes. I mean, no matter what happens, we can still make something out of the situation. Why don't you pull up the slides, Billy? If the mayor won't buy the doctor's proposal, then he gets the small businessman down on his neck, the homeowner's council, and all that sort. And if he does buy it, he'll fall out with a whole host of the big stockholders in the baths, his best supporters up until now. And they're going to have to kick in a lot of new capital. You bet they will. And then the ring is broken. See? And day after day in the paper, we'll keep drumming into the public that the mayor is incompetent. And then the whole town and administ administration ought to be placed in the hands of the liberals. We're right on the verge of a revolution. <laughs> that is Laxon? <laughs> oh, Stockman, man of the hour. Roll the presses, Mr. Hofstad. Tell it. What? You don't plan to tear down this pub, do you, doctor? <laughs> now it's war in this town, Mr. Billing. This article is only the beginning. Tell it, doc. What do you think about my article, Mr. Hofstad? Oh, it's dope. Tell it! Have everyone on your side. Moderates and radicals, the whole damn town. Tell it, Doc! If everyone is on his side, perhaps we might run it. Well, run it in the morning, man. 
Revolution now! War! Tell it! Bring on the dynamite! You know, it's not just sewers and water mains. This whole society needs a reboot. Tell it! We just need to stick together. This revolution will not be compromised. Take back the power to the people. I repeat, this revolution will not be compromised. Well, if we move ahead calmly, in moderation, there might not be any danger. I believe perhaps the doctor might be a friend to the society. The people's friend. I mean, Dr. S, you're the man. Thank you, my dearest, unfailing friends. Well, the doctor can be a really useful man for us. As long as he limits himself to the bats and doesn't interfere with the authorities. Oh, come on, Alexan, you're always so fearful. Well, if you ruin local authorities, you might wind up with idiots controlling our town. And that can really damage local business. What about educating citizens? Yes. When a man has finances at stake, he can think of everything. And I hope I'm never burdened with money. Here, here. My heart belongs to the people, always. But my priority is <laughs> support the authorities, the local ones, that is. Well, what do you think? Should we call it quits with us, Loxen? Do you know any other man who pay for paper and labor? <sighs> if only we got the money. Oh, hi. What are you doing here? Here. I don't want to translate it. You promised me. Well, I haven't read it then. And of course, you haven't read it either. You know I don't understand it. This should never be printed in the Times. Why not? This is a story about some all-powerful God that fixes everything for good people and punishes bad people. Which is exactly what the public wants. You know, life isn't like that. This is trash. But it sells papers, Patra. But you have a power. You're helping such a great cause right now. You're revealing the truth. Well, yeah, I'm helping him because he's your father. Well, is that it? Not the truth? Well, yes, of course, that too. Well, I will never trust you again. The changes the doctor is suggesting will 
cost us a lot of money, it will be necessary to raise taxes. Well, you mean the citizens will have to pay for it? The taxpayers? Well, my dear Aslaskin, who else? What about the spa owners, no? No, the owners cannot extend themselves any further. Really, Mr. Mayor? I'm afraid so. So if people want all these changes, the town itself will, um, will have to pay for them. Well, this is totally a different picture, Mr. Hofstad. Well, it completely is. The worst part is we'll be forced to shut down the baths for, for two years. Completely? What will we live on in the meantime? Well, as Laxon, that's sadly a very difficult question to, uh, to answer. But what do you want us to do? You think a single, single summer visitor would visit us here and come here if people are spreading rumors about the baths? Are they just rumors? <laughs> well, I haven't been able to persuade myself that the water is actually polluted. Then the doctor is absolutely reckless. Well, meanwhile, I've drawn up a brief statement. It suggests that all and any possible deficiencies might be covered within the spa's current budget. Would well, you have it with you, Mr. Mayor? Yes, I do. I brought it along just in case. Wait, what? Public opinion controls the press. Not printing the article. Doesn't a man with a family have a right to proclaim the truth? I will be heard. My report's coming out no matter what. I'll hold a mass meeting and read it aloud. All my fellow townspeople are going to hear the voice of truth. This awful pollution came from my factory? If that is true, then my grandfather and father before me now, I myself have been poisoning this town for a century. Like three engines of death. I can't accept that disgrace. I must keep my good name. People call me the Badger. Isn't the Badger is kind of big? They are wrong. I will live and die a spotless human being. We have in our midst a person whom I think we can all accept as the moderator of this meeting. I'm referring to the chairperson of our homeowners council, the Honorable Aslaxon. If my fellow townspeople express their confidence in me to moderate this town hall, <laughs> I cannot refuse. Permit me to say a few brief words. I am a person who is dedicated to prudent moderation and to moderate prudence. Life has taught me that moderation is the most rewarding of all virtues. Mr. Horster? Oh, Mrs. Stockman, Petra, welcome. Hello, Captain Hurster. I heard the Major chose a moderator for today. Why? I thought my father was offering a lecture, a scientific talk on his discovery. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you two can safely sit here. The doctor is already there. Por favor. Do you think there's going to be a riot? Yes, mucha gente. You never can tell with so many people. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, Thomas has been so desperate to get the word out and wanted to have a meeting and everybody else shut him out. 
Thank you for giving him this space. Mm -hmm. Well, every man deserves to have a place. Every man deserves to be heard. It was brave of you, Captain Horster. I don't think it took too much courage. I mean, compared with battling storms at sea, this is, this is nothing. It's not. Oh, look, Eden. I guess the town hall is about to start. Empezamos. The Honorable Azlaxen presiding. I would urge the gentleman who convened this meeting to make every effort to stay within the bounds of moderation. And with due regard for the pure crucial interests of this town, I am compelled to present a proposal. I think it's, it's safe to assume that not a single citizen here tonight would find it desirable um, that exaggerated and unreliable charges about the sanitary conditions of the baths should gain currency abroad. Yes? I therefore move, I therefore move that this gathering refuse to permit the staff physician to read or otherwise report on his version of the matter. What? The doctor's besides it being a vote of no confidence for the leadership in this town would actually mean afflicting our taxpayers with a needless expenditure of at least a uh, hundred thousand crowns. Is uh, that what you wish? No! Quiet, quiet, gentlemen. I second the mayor's proposal. The doctor says he cares about the baths, but he really wants is a complete revolution. So, I am beginning to sense that we have let ourselves be, be misled by false facts. Oh, thank you! Well, clearly, Dr. Stockman now has the will of the majority against him. Isn't an editor's first and foremost responsibility to work in collaboration with his readers? The doctor's, the doctor's mic is being muted. If the doctor agrees to talk about anything that is not about our healthy and clean spa, then he can have the floor. Never mind the baths then. No? Given this sham of a town hall? I'm going to talk about something quite different. Do I have the floor? Now, I'm going to unveil a discovery to you of a vastly different dimension than this business that our water is polluted and that our spa is built on mucked up soil. Here now is my even greater discovery. I've realized these last few days that all the springs of our spiritual life are polluted and that our entire community rests on toxic lies. Now I've loved my hometown as much as any man can. I was barely grown up when I left here. For many years then, I practiced medicine in the far north at the end of nowhere. But I never stopped caring about my birthplace. I had this idea. I brooded on that egg like a mother hen, and what I finally hatched was the plan for the baths. And at long last, when the fates allowed me to come back home, I had one wish, a burning desire to contribute to the town and the people I loved. And let me tell you, friends, it was a grand feeling because I wanted to give my education to this town. I loved it. So I spent months without pay or encouragement and dreamed up the whole project of the Springs. And why? Not for my brother's reasons, so that fine cars and rich tourists would crowd our streets, but so that we might cure the sick. 
so that we might meet people from all over the world and learn from them and become broader and more civilized. In other words, more like human beings, more like a people. And so I went around, exulting in my blind happiness. But the night before last, my eyes were opened wide, and the first thing I saw was the utter stupidity of the authorities. I realized what a total mess our local leaders had made out of this month. These so-called leaders like a pack of goats in a stand of new trees. They strip off everything that's good. They block a free man's way wherever he turns, and I really don't see why we shouldn't exterminate them like any other predator. I don't know why it took so long for me to take a really close look at these gentlemen. Because right before my eyes, almost daily, I've seen their EDC in a prime example. Exhibit A, my brother Peter. Even so, the mayor, the board, they're not the overwhelming menace to society. They're not the ones most active in poisoning our spiritual life and polluting the very ground we stand on. They're not the worst enemies of truth and freedom in our society. And now I will name those enemies, because that's exactly my great discovery yesterday. The worst enemy of truth and freedom amongst us is the solid majority. The solid majority. Matomata tasuha. Solidna birshis. The solid majority. Znaczna większość. A grande maioria. Big chunk. The absolute mirret. La solida mayoría. Yes. The damned majority. That's yes. The damned majority. That's it. Now you know. I, I say the majority is never right. Never. I mean, who makes up the majority in, 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 in any country? The intelligent or the stupid? Now, I think we all know over this whole wide earth that the stupid are the fearsome, fearful, overpowering, overwhelming dumbasses. The majority has the might, but they lack the right. Truly, truly, the majority is wrong. Was the majority right when they stood by while Jesus was crucified? Was the majority right when they refused to believe that the earth moved around the sun and, and, and let Galileo be driven to his knees like a dog? The minority is right. The truth is with me and a few ethical other intelligent individuals. And I'll be damned if I allow the, 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 the intelligent to be ruled by the stupid. I proclaim it now. I am waging a war against the age old revolution that the majority holds all the truths. The majority is the enemy of the people. And what are these truths that the majority fucks around? The ones so old and age old right that they're nearly senile. Revolution.
Burmester Stockman is de vijand. Burmester Stockman is de vijand. Burgemeester Stockman is de vijand. I am the enemy of the people.